It's Madden NFL 22, and EA Sports brings you the game of the week. It's the Panthers and the Colts coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Just a short time ago, smoke from the pyrotechnics filled the dome as the Colts made their way out of the locker room. We're set for football as the Colts get set to match up with the Carolina Panthers. Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we take a look at the Colts entering play. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. On the other side of the field for the visiting Panthers. They come in off a loss last time out, but overall they've been playing well. Six wins and eight prior to that defeat. to the 20 yard line and no further so here are the Panthers now for their opening drive and we get a glance here at their leader the man who'll be calling the plays under center coming off of a loss their last time out I think he's just seeking to make a bigger impact on the game he threw a touchdown pass didn't throw an interception I think he just wants to jump those numbers up in terms of flinging it around and letting his receivers get into the end zone First carry of the game for Christian McCaffrey. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. Well, sometimes it's hard to take your eyes off this guy at the linebacker position. He can really cover some ground, and he did there to make that play. And sometimes all of your best laid plans of play design, your X's and O's, they can't always account for individual effort defensively. And this was one of those times. Just a terrific play to hustle over there and get the running back to the ground. And the next-gen stats show us the top speed there, better than 18 miles an hour. Second and nine. He'll look to throw. Catch is made by Marquise Brown. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Well, they obviously read man coverage there, partner, and he got downfield and broke down the defender. Made him what do you think, mean by that? Bro? Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. Then he curls back inside for the completion. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They'll look to throw here on first down. He's got his tight end. It's Tommy Tremble. The numbers for him from a week ago. Four catches, 56 yards. And he was able to get open there, but that's not always easy against this bunch defensively. We are deep enough into the season where numbers count. This is number one rated defense in the NFL. He'll have a tough time. First drive of the game. We did see this in practice, didn't we? Because they allowed us to stay and watch and see what the opening script would be, even though we don't know the exact play calls. That looks a lot like what we saw them execute, doesn't it? It really does. And in practice, it wasn't about a lot of big shots on the opening drive. They wanted to put together a series of plays, sustain it. They've done that. The defense now on their heels a little. That, that they are. And you know what else is happening now? They're gaining information. They're gaining knowledge about how the defense is planning on playing them. So not only are they being successful on this drive, they're filing things away for future drives in this game. 
I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing the four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. The confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sidelines thinking to themselves and expressing, let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. Back to the ground attack here. It's McCaffrey. And he'll get four there down to about the 12-yard line. Play number nine now on this pretty long opening drive. But this is third down. They'll set up a throw. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. And Gano's kick is right through. And the Panthers stake claim to a 3-0 lead. Well, they didn't get in the end zone, but pretty good balance there on the opening drive between the run and the pass. Yeah, I think that that was probably what they wanted to get accomplished right out of the gate. Throw the ball with success, run it, of course, to set the tone. So we saw the offensive coordinator's play sheet, probably wrote himself a little note, exactly what we wanted to do. Probed it early and got it done. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. And leading them, Charles, their quarterback, their field general. And he ought to have a lot of pep in his step after last week's performance because he did exactly as you want him to play if you're a coach. Three touchdown passes, zero interceptions, which usually means you're making a lot of right decisions out there. And got him the win. And he pushes through a would-be tackler to get about three yards second down. These are his numbers from last week's contest. 18 carries, 115 yards, and a touchdown. Yeah, he could very well be on his way to a rushing title, but guess what? His offensive line, they're meeting separately because they want that rushing title as much as he does, and they want to make sure they get him there. Defensively here, you're facing a top-five team in terms of points scored in the NFL, so when they're that high power, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20 because, to me, that's the magic number. 20 points scored. Give yourself your, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around. Touchdown, Indianapolis. What a great play there. His sixth touchdown of the season. And the Colts have taken the lead. Well, we know that he can beat you in a number of ways. He can catch it short. He can take it long. Or he can do what we just saw right there, catch it, and then run with a football. And that should serve as a big warning to this defense. They know now that they have to stick close to these receivers because they have the ability to break games wide open after the catch. And that one wound up in the end zone. PAT up and good by Rosas. And that makes it a 7-3 lead. So a 75-yard scoring drive on just three plays. And the result for the Colts is a touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. Taking it at about the one. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. And you know, it's certainly a lot of football left to play. We're not into December yet, but right now where we stand, they're in first place in their division, looking really good and looking to be a threat come January. And are you one of those early holiday shoppers, partner? Are you one of those guys get your list done? Because I think about what every team has on their holiday shopping list right now. What's the number one goal? Make the playoffs. Number two, win your division. Number three, and I think the biggest goal of all, Try to get the number one seed so you get that first round by and ensure you don't have to go anywhere in January and hopefully get to the Super Bowl that way. On right, first down, a running play ends up going backwards as he won't get close to the line of scrimmage. In fact, he's going to lose four yards. Part of their struggles last week was getting these negative plays on first and second down. That's something they have to be wary of as this game continues. They'll have to deal with a second and 14 now after the loss. From the shotgun to McCaffrey. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Well, this defense for the Colts, they were very good last week in the win over New Orleans. And I'm eager to see the game plan and trying to attack them this week because when you take it away four times through interceptions, what do you do now when you go into a game? 
Do you decide you can't throw the ball? Do you try and run it more? Or do you tell your quarterback, on, make sure you see Let's your guys go. open before you deliver? A pair of first downs gives him a first and 10 up at the 44. Now a draw play to McCaffrey. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Colts territory. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Now a give right side McCaffrey, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. They go backwards there two yards, and second and one is now third and three. Now back to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short, they elect to throw for it. And that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short, but you got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. The Indy offense at the line and set to go. And it's only November, but the playoffs, we know how it works. He'll be here before you know it. If it ended today, they would be the number one seed. And that's a great spot to be in, but I love the phrase, if it ended today. And I guarantee you, that's what they've discussed in their locker room, in their meeting rooms. Yeah, we know where we'd be if it ended today, but we also know it's not ending today. Right. So they've got to continue to play the type of ball that put them in the spot where they're number one in their conference. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. Let's go. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. He'll find Paris Campbell, that's complete. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A big play there on the catch and run. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle, it doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. They'll set up to throw. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. They'll drop to throw toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an out of boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. Now a handoff. Taylor with it. And he's going to battle his way down right around the two-yard line. Seven big yards on the carry there to get him within range of the goal line with third down upcoming. They're going to look to throw. And that is caught. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Mo Alley Cox, his first touchdown of the year. And the Colts are able to grow their lead. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury. And it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run. He finds himself open for an easy touchdown. Rosas good with the extra point, and that pushes the lead up to 11. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all, and it culminates in an Indianapolis touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Carolina offense about ready to go. 
Their deficit is 11, 14 to 3, and needing to get something going here as they come up on first and 10. They'll try and start this drive in the air. That caught by Trimble. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll look to throw. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. Three yards the gain there, second down. Well, speed is definitely a calling card if you play cornerback in this league, and he does a terrific job there of hustling in quickly to make the play. Here's a second and seven. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he made. This is intercepted. Picked off by Darius Leonard, the linebacker. And the Colts will have the football as this is taken up past the 30. A CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on-the-job training. So he's got to take this feedback that he's getting, negative or otherwise, and turn it into positives moving forward. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. Second down, another run with Taylor. Runs over it. 43 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. A gain of six there on first. Ran the perfect defense in this situation. Would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. And Charles, with that completion, I'm told that puts him now over 3,000 yards passing on the campaign. And Brandon, I think we have to start to think about where we are in the season. Because right now, 4,000 is not out of the question. I think a big game or two, he's certainly capable of getting that done. So from Panther territory now, it's first and 10 at the 26-yard line. Back to throw. That is caught. Michael Pittman with it. And he'll be out of bounds. And that's a nice job of working his way open down in the red zone. Looked that one in, and they made a beeline for the pylon. He didn't quite get there, and you want to give him a little extra for the effort. But instead, he sets his guys up in excellent shape with a first and goal. And this will result in him losing yardage back to the three. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Second and three. Touchdown, Colts! It's complete. Kyron Branson, his first touchdown on the year. And the Colts, they add on to their advantage. So simple math here in the first half. They've had three drives offensively, and they have scored every time, and they've got the lead. Well, whenever we talk about adjustments, we usually talk about an offense making adjustments, right? This is all about the defense. They've got to figure out some way, somehow, to slow them down. Do they blitz a little bit more? Do they play more zone coverage? Right now, they don't know where to go because they're hitting them in every direction. Sanchez now. He'll kick it away following the touchdown. And he'll just take a seat in the driver to get at the 25-yard line. Here's the Carolina offense as they get ready to take over here. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. And here my old college coach right now, 
He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. But their hope is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? <laughs> Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. A give running left, it's McCaffrey. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. A nice job defensively. And it likely forces a punt situation on fourth. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and ten. Here he is, the man taking the snaps under center, heading out for the next possession. And a trio of touchdown passes so far. They've got the lead as well. All is good in their football world at this point. And it's so much fun for our colleagues, right? Think about our producer, our director, everyone putting together these shots. Wouldn't you love to be in the truck right now and hear him calling for it? Give me that one, give me that one, give me that one. And we just saw three beautiful touchdown passes. Now he's looking for four. The Indy offense at the line and set to go. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Slant pass hauled in by Campbell. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And they're going to speed things up here. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Throw left side complete. That's Hines. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. A good rally to the football keeps him to only a yard in its second down. He'll drop to throw. Campbell making the catch. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. And I see an extra defensive back on the field. A little surprise here on third and one. They'll look to throw again. Got an open man. That's Campbell. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They go play action here on first down. He'll rifle this one deep right side. And incomplete on the deep ball. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far, but on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. Forced out to his left. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And this one incomplete. Oh, he couldn't hang on to it in the end zone, and that's one that'll haunt you. And now it brings up third down. Rosas' kick is good. And the lead up to three touchdowns now. It's 24 to three. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, bye weeks, they're over. We once again got a full slate of games to get to as we take you around the NFL here in week 12. We'll begin our trip around the NFL at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Tennessee taking on their closest rivals distance-wise in Atlanta. And it's the Titans with the lead in the second quarter of play. Ryan Tannehill's throwing a touchdown there. Next, we'll take the trip north to the Steel City to check on the Steelers at home in Pittsburgh. And for the moment, they find themselves trailing the visiting Cincinnati Bengals. A couple of touchdown passes there for Joe Burrow. Finally, let's get down to Houston. Check on the Texans at home at NRG Stadium. And that one all even as they play the visiting Bucks. Now time for a check of the next-gen stats in the first half for Carolina. And they didn't get a whole lot accomplished through the air in those first two quarters of play. They'll need to up their game if they want to rally all the way back. Meanwhile, for the Colts, we check out their numbers on the ground as they'll try to keep the momentum going 
into the second half. Final adjustments taking place in both teams' locker rooms. We're closing in on the second half. And to bring it your way, let's go back up to Indianapolis and rejoin Brandon and Charles. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. Second half ready to get underway. The Colts with a lead, and they will receive the football. Here's Isaiah Rodgers to return. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. So here are the Colts to take over. They've got the lead right now as they start this drive first and 10. Of course, remember, they beat the Saints a week ago. So some good momentum rolling right now. A carry by Taylor to start the drive. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. 57 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Catch made here by Campbell. And he's brought down. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Now, after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. The last run got six, now second and four. We'll check on his status when we get back. Naeem Hines, his first carry. He's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Finding room to the 20. And finally, wrestled down at the 11. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at this. Touchdown! Completed the one. Michael Pittman with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Colts take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. You had fun with this one, partner? I am. I mean, he's been fun to watch under set. We always talk about you know, getting to the next level, right? When we see people get into the zone, this guy's in the master class right now. What a performance he's putting on, just carving them up. Four touchdown passes, carving them up is right. Seems like everything he throws is going to be a completion and going in the end zone. PAT up and good by Rosas. And that'll increase their lead to 28. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. They have been struggling. I would imagine at halftime they went through some possible changes. Well, those changes aren't working, so now where do you go? I think that now it's much more in their head. And what I mean by that is, just what you said, you've gone over the changes. I bet they were pretty clinical at the half, not too emotional. They might need to go to the emotional <laughs> side because you've got to find something, some spark somewhere. And so far, just being calm hasn't exactly worked. They need any spark at this point. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. He'll look to throw. This will be caught by Brown. Three yards the game there, second down. Again, he'll drop the throw. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. 
The ball's out. McCaffrey lost it. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, or that could have been trouble. All I can say about this play is that someone's living right. I mean, he's trying to gain the yard. He's trying to get upfield. Ball comes free. What's that panic that we've talked about oftentimes that you feel when you yeah, lose the ball? You can sense it. Oh, you can sense it. And somehow he... He's got it for a Panther touchdown. Miko oh, Hardman, his Fuck fifth up, touchdown guys. now Fuck on up. the year. And the Panthers are able to cut into this lead. In today's NFL, you know, we talk about quarterbacks and their speed and accuracy, but there's still something about a guy slinging one downfield. And you'd think on third down, they'd just be looking for something right beyond the sticks. And I think they caught the defense flat-footed as a result because they decided they were going to take a shot right there, and it ended up being a big play. And the final number on that throw, boy, it traveled an even 69 yards. Extra point try, good by Gano. And that'll cut the lead back down to 21. Gano now following the touchdown here to kick it away. And here's Rodgers to return. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Indianapolis offense ready to go again. Still operating with a comfortable lead despite the score a moment ago as they begin first and ten. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. The toss here completed to Pittman. The 40. Pass the 20. Touchdown, Indianapolis. And Michael Pittman with his second touchdown of the game, number eight on the season. And the Colts are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. In order to lead in a game, we're going to get plenty of contributors, but that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. Rosas good with the extra point, and that'll increase their lead to 28. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Carolina getting set to take the field. They are right now just ice cold. I mean, they have struggled big time in this game, and they're getting blown out. How do they adjust? So tough because we always talk about it being a team game, and you need all 11 working well together. But every now and then, partner, you need that one guy who can make a play against all odds that maybe can ignite things. And I think that's what they're looking for right now. Yeah, you talk about going to your playmakers. They probably need to do it. Find someone that you're used to touching the football that makes big plays and give them that opportunity to maybe wake up everyone else. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. They'll look to throw here. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. But the passing windows are just not there. That's just another example of how great this defense has been all game long. And that's exactly what a top 10 defense can do. They can really change the game tempo and frustrate you as you try to execute offensively. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. Here's the Panthers punter now as he's on to kick it away. And this will be covered up. Pretty good result. It'll be down at the 14-yard line. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. And last time, the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That Maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw things up, whether it's on your grease board, right, in your play One play drive is exactly what you brought on offense. What they have to be careful of is not having a letdown. It was yeah. really easy last time. They can't expect that going forward. And we'll see if it's that easy here. Back to Taylor on first down. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. 89 yards rushing now for the NFL leader coming into this ball game. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. On the handoff, this is Taylor. A oh, nice move in midfield. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Back-to-back 11-yard -back gains, and they've got another first down. 
He'll look to throw. Throw left side here complete to Campbell. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who could turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw. It's knocked away and incomplete. Quarterbacks work all the time on manipulating a defense with their eyes and their head movement. In this case, he just stared the receiver down. That allowed for excellent coverage. Able to knock that one away. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. Try to punch it in with Taylor. Taylor's got the first down and more. And down to the 29-yard line. Remember, that was fourth and a full two yards. There's a big difference between that and fourth and maybe six inches or a yard. Yeah, you're exactly right, because when it's that six inches, you just fall forward and you pick it up, right? You just go quarterback sneak. Under pressure, and down he goes. They sack him back at the 36. Yitor Gross Matos. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. Remember, they had the nice gain on the previous play, but they just gave a lot of it back right there on that sack. Yeah, to get the sack, get back some real estate. Felt like the type of play that could spark a defense and swing some momentum. Almost felt like a take that type of a play, didn't it, partner? He's going to let this go for the end zone. And that will be incomplete. Oh, he left that one in a bad spot, but fortunately it's just an incompletion and not picked to bring up fourth down. Rosa's kick is good. And that will just add three more to a lead that's already out of hand. So attack on three more, though this, it's just a rare drive where they did not find the end zone. Yeah, you're right about that, partner. But at this point, I don't think you're too concerned about that. You just want to possess the football for a while and drain the clock. If you can get three out of it, that's great, too. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. They've got to dig down deep. I mean, they need something right now, really anything to cling on to. This offense has struggled. Partner, join me in a walk to their locker room at the half, okay? Because I think what we would have seen is an offensive coordinator and his, and his assistant coaches getting together with all their positions then coming together as a group, going over adjustments, and then the head coach coming in and just screaming, wake up. Yeah. Let's get moving, guys. I'm kind of glad we weren't in there at halftime, actually. <laughs> I mean, you think you might have turned it on us, too? Yeah. But right now, whatever was said hasn't been working. Second down and inches. There's Tremble, the tight end. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll set up a throw. And incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Back to throw again. And that will be incomplete. It just seems like all game long, there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 47. Taking a deep shot here for Hardman. And he's got it. Touchdown, Panthers. Miko Hardman. Two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Panthers get a small measure of revenge as they cut into this fourth quarter deficit. Gano the extra point, and the lead is down to 24. Gano now following the touchdown here to kick it away. Now 
And Rodgers will hold on to this one, and it'll come out to the 25. Charles, you said earlier this defense is probably going to need to hold these guys right around 20 or under that if they were going to have a chance. It was evident pretty early on that wasn't going to happen. time ago in this game didn't they it looks like they're headed towards a big big number but 20 was the threshold because that kept them in the ball game and kept the pressure off of their own offense and he'll work this forward for about three at second down Brandon I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces it, and I know it sounds crazy but they practiced for this back in training camp they knew they'd be in situations there would be extra defenders in the box coming after them trying to keep them from locking down a game Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. On first down, Hines, and he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. This is Hines. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Hines. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. 47 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Touchdown, Colts! Nine Hines, his first touchdown on the are looking to make it too straight as they add on to this fourth quarter lead. Well, where our booth is here, we can see all of the writers to our left, and their post-game stories, Charles, they have been fired for some time because this game, boy, is a lot sided. Yeah, we can see our guy Scoop. He's even got his fedora tipped over his face. I think he's taking a nap now. Nothing left to write for him, but how gratifying has it been for them? to see what they've done in practice and carry it into a game and see the execution be so good. They've got to feel fantastic about what they've accomplished in this one. PAT up and good by Rosas. And that will extend this big lead. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. Taken at the goal line. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. to the field here come the Panthers and they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone and just think of what it's like now on the sideline because when you score a touchdown you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive when you scored points it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there and now the drive starts with a completion out to the right and he's got this almost to the 40 before going out They'll look to throw here on first down. That's complete out right to the tight end, Tremble. Seven yards to pick up there. Second and three. Oh, he'll take a shot from McCaffrey downfield. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Open man left side, it's the tight end Trimble. And he is going to have a Panthers first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and three. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and ten at the 49-yard line. 
They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. Not what they had in mind there. That's going to go as a loss of four. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked up by Kenny Moore. And they'll start out with great field position at the 47-yard line in enemy territory. And they'll come out with a three tight end look on the first play of the drive. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. Another scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. On third down, it's Hines. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. It's a pickup of four, but they're still a yard short here with fourth down, fourth coming. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get you reset. They've got a fourth down here in a game that looks to have been decided already. Back to throw here. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. The Colts unable to convert here on fourth down. And the Panthers will get the football back. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. He's going to let it fly. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. He'll drop to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. Well, so far in this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and 10. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? Catch is made by Hardman. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there is going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. And here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. And somewhat of a measure of revenge as he's in for the touchdown, but they still trail big time. He'll take it, but he won't be able to smile about it. Extra point try, good by Godot. And the lead is down to 24. Just a four-play drive that time. And Carolina scores to cap it off. So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. And this is going to be taken in by the Colts. Now they're down big here in the fourth. They had to try the onside kick. Can't fault them for the effort, at least. No, you can't at all. And if nothing else, now you've put something that you're trying to practice, right, that you, you've worked on into a game situation, and now you can go back and dissect it. So if you need it again sometime, maybe you'll find a better way to do it. But, yeah, this game's pretty much done for them. The well, former LSU Tiger Dante Jackson on the stop. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. Another example of this offense really having their way, Charles, and another big chunk play there on the ground. And when you look at the defense, they've got to do a much better job of wrapping up when they tackle. A lot of great opportunities continue to slip through their fingers, as do the runners. And they take a knee. The 
Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Why were they clicking on offense? They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So for the Colts, they just keep on rolling as they move to 9-2 and two with a win here. And they'll hit the road next week to take on the Baltimore Ravens. Meanwhile, for Carolina, we'll see how this affects their playoff standing as they fall to 7-4 and four now on the year. And they'll try and turn things around.